For the past six years, using an Apple TV can feel more like an epic struggle with the remote than enjoying any epic content you want to watch. But is the new remote the hero to save us from our struggles? Now, if you're wondering whether the Apple TV 4K 2021 version is worth the upgrade, I made an entire video about that. But for me personally, I ended up not upgrading my Apple TV 4K and just getting the new remote. I don't have a TV that can take advantage of the new high frame rate HDR. And I also connect my Apple TV to my network with Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi, and I have plenty of HomePod minis and other potential thread border routers around my smart home, so I'm not going to initially benefit from the additional thread controls in the new Apple TV, at least just yet. Now, speaking of the remote, it's just a little bit bigger than the previous remote and uh, definitely thicker, so it's not going to be as big as maybe uh, a remote you might get with a television or some other set-top box, but it has much more weight in the hand, which feels good. It still charges via lightning. One of the things I would have really loved to see on the hardware, and a lot of people are talking about this, is Apple just came out with these really cool Air Tags and using the U1 chip to find them if you have an iPhone that supports that. And we've all lost the Apple TV remote in a couch or under, you know, who knows what pillow. And it would be really nice to have a U1 chip built into this to make it easy to find. Now, pairing this new remote with your existing Apple TV 4K or Apple TV HD is a pretty easy process. You just take the remote and put it within three to four inches of the Apple TV and hold down on the back button and the volume up button at the same time for about two seconds. And the Apple TV should recognize it and go ahead and pair. Now, for me, after I did that, my Apple TV seemed to kind of lock up, so I had to just uh, eventually unplug the Apple TV and plug it back in, and then everything just worked. The remote had already paired somehow during that process, and I guess it just kind of froze up for a second. But after that, I was good to go. So in the new remote, they've moved the Siri button to the side. With the last remote, it was right prominent in the middle there. And Apple had been for the last remote promoting the heck out of using Siri with the Apple TV to find different content you wanted. And I bet realistically, a lot of people didn't do that. So that probably uh, makes part of the reason why they moved to the side. It is pretty convenient if you're holding it in your right hand, but not in your left. So another thing people have been complaining about with this remote is that the mute button is right where the play pause button used to be on the old one. So if you're in the habit of tapping the play pause button here, uh, then you uh, might inadvertently tap the mute button instead. Uh, play pause is one up from that. It uh, hasn't been a huge deal to me, but it is something a lot of people are complaining about. And I think it's just something in general that, you know, you'll get used to over time. Oh, hey there. You know, one of the great improvements with this Apple TV remote is removing the menu button and replacing it with a proper back button. Now, the behavior for the back button in tvOS isn't consistent across all of these apps from all these different streaming companies but it generally is much more a back button than the menu button, which previously basically was a back button. So it's really good to see that officially become a back button on this new remote. Now, one of the most notable changes for this remote is the D-pad up here, and the inside of this D-pad actually can perform just like the touchpad on the old Siri remote. So you're still able to do the swipes, especially for scrubbing to a particular part of a movie that you might want to scrub to. Now, um, the outside of it, of course, just performs just like you would expect with a normal D-pad, and you can also turn off the touch sensitivity on the inside in settings. You can also say whether you want the setting to be uh, slow, medium, or fast in terms of the touch sensitivity here, which is nice to have those details. I personally like it for uh, any of these touch remotes from Apple to be on the slow setting. Even though I like a fast trackpad on my Mac, I just find that to be a little better for this context. But people who aren't used to using a remote with touch on it might pick up this remote and be confused then you might want to consider turning off the touch and just keeping it as a basic D-pad with then a center button for selecting.
Now, one small addition here that I really like is the power button. So it's super handy to be able to press this and then turn on both my TV and the Apple TV. I used to be able to just hit the menu button to do that, but that's not nearly as intuitive as hitting a power button to turn things on. Now, to turn your Apple TV and your TV off, you have to press and hold this power button. I think Apple's going for, you know, not wanting to have any accidental touches there. So you'll get like a little HUD that appears on uh, the tvOS screen saying you need to press and hold to turn off but it can use the IR blaster in the front of this remote to talk to any number of TVs both for things like power and then also volume now personally I never really liked the tactile feedback that like sound and feel you get when you press the buttons on the old Apple TV remote but I'm happy to say that this new Apple TV remote I think is a big improvement in that department I'm touching the buttons.